Well, what you just heard is, of course, the phenomenon known as speaking in tongues. And to outsiders, it's gibberish. But to believers, it's God's gift to chosen followers. And in fact, it's said in the Bible that all the apostles had this strange verbal rapture. Well, here's what we have been told about speaking in tongues, that this is a gift that can come to you suddenly, that the words are prayer in its purest form, like a current running through you straight from heaven, and hundreds of millions are joining in. Our Dr. Nancy Snyderman set out to learn more about this, beginning with the pastor of a huge congregation in Florida, who says his gift is also his armor. It's an unrecognizable mix of vowels and consonants, which believers say is the Holy Spirit speaking through them to God, without any interference from the mind or any limitations of language. The proof is in the pudding, is, is the way that I like to see it. There are two billion Christians in the world today, 523 million speak in tongues. So there's something going on. And his following proves it, with a membership of 10,000 people who pray at his church in Tampa, Florida, called Without Walls International. Oh. This actually goes beyond the natural. People want the supernatural. They're hungry for something that is outside of the natural realm. And that's what the gifts of the Holy Spirit is all about. We're tapping into something that's far beyond us. Those who claim to have the ability to speak in tongues believe that they've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. But to a newcomer, it's incomprehensible. I probably sat about midway through a service and then thought, those two people up on the stage, and that was Pastor Randy and Paula White, are crazy. It looked like chaos to me. People falling on the floor, people praying in things that I didn't understand, and, I, and the band singing and everybody, and I turned around and I walked out. Your walk with God is not Jacqueline Knight says she's not quite sure how it happened, especially in light of her sober religious background. But five years ago, she became a believer and now is a spokeswoman for the church. So when you pray and you don't really, it's not really me talking. It's the spirit inside of me communing to God. But like most who speak in tongues, she has no idea what she's saying. It's almost like a baby learning to talk. When you're a baby and you learn to talk, you have certain sounds. So when you first start speaking in the spirit, there's certain sounds that you make and you don't know what they mean. I don't know what it is I'm saying, but if you were to ask me right now to say something in my prayer language, yes, I could pray in it. Do I know what words are gonna come out? Right now I could say, um, did that mean anything? My it meant something to my spirit, man. Are these people who in everyday activity I would consider normal? Oh, of course. Many people don't know just how widespread this is. It, it's a very, very widespread phenomenon and it's, it's growing every day. Harvey Cox, professor of divinity at Harvard University, remains open to the possibility that this is a true religious phenomenon and says that religions which incorporate speaking in tongues are some of today's fastest growing. They've managed to reach people that the normal Baptists and Episcopalians and Methodists simply haven't gotten to and frankly, I think there's one very simple reason. There are a lot of people in the world who can't sit still for, an, for a whole hour. He says people want to experience religion, to feel it. Identifying strongly with the group, says psychologist Stephen J. Lynn, is what makes speaking in tongues appealing to so many. Is it real? It's real in the sense that it is believed to be real by the people who speak tongues and interpret tongues. Is it real in the sense that it is uh, actual language? No. It seems to be consisting of nonsense syllables mm -hmm. taken from the speech individuals are familiar with. 
and strung together haphazardly. In fact, Lynn says research has shown that speaking in tongues is learned by watching others, which leads some in the scientific community to conclude that speaking in tongues is likely a social phenomenon. Can you fake it? You can learn it. If you can learn it, you can fake it. <laughs> Some of the young people we met actually did admit to faking it, at least in the beginning. All these teenagers around me had this ability that I never really understood or wanted to be a part of. And so because I felt kind of left out and ashamed that I didn't have it, I started faking it. And it was just like make up words and just say whatever came to my head just to, because everybody was doing it. But at a teen prayer meeting like this one, Brian Heppelite says he finally got the gift. The actual gift of speaking in tongues is something that's real sacred, that's between you and God, that you can't fake or imitate. If you're faking it and have never really learned or really done it, but you're really just an imposter, it doesn't sound the same, frankly, really? Nancy. No, there's a certain kind of a freedom and uh, spontaneity that uh, you can see in, in genuine speaking in tongues. Skeptics theorize that people from the same congregation would tend to speak similarly as they learn and practice together. But listen as we slow down these examples. Though these are all members of the same church, they all sound quite different. Even a religion as traditional as Roman Catholicism now accepts speaking in tongues. Charismatic Catholics, as they call themselves, now even have the Pope's blessing. It's real freedom, I think, because it's like the, the expression comes... There's only so many ways you can say, God, you're so awesome. Claire Gelman prays in tongues at St. Veronica's Church in New Jersey. It's a language you've never cursed in or said anything horrible in, and it's his language, and it's, it's per more perfect. Speaking in tongues doesn't happen for everybody who tries. David Swantek is another member of the New Jersey prayer group who says he received another gift, the gift of interpretation. I don't speak in tongues. And uh, like one time, God, you know, I, God blessed me with the gift to interpret tongues. And one time where everyone was praying in tongues. Let so me stop you for a second. You don't speak in tongues. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you can understand. It's different yeah. gifts. It's yeah. different yeah. gifts. Right. The same spirit. So when I hear this, and it won't make any sense to me, you hear words? Um, not, not exactly. You know what they're praying. You know what they're saying. You know the thesis statement behind this beautiful paper they've just composed. Like, um, like this one girl who's not here today, she was praying in tongues, and she was praising God in the same song that was, like, sung and the same song that the hills praise God. And, like, that sounds really weird and all that, but it's like, wow. I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Spirit just for a moment. While, we while what some call supernatural experiences may raise eyebrows, spirit-filled worshipers say their faith is all they need. When people don't understand, they either mock, they make fun of, or they will actually begin to study what this is all about. The mainline denominational churches today are dwindling, and the full gospel churches, the Pentecostal churches, or what we call the charismatic churches, are actually growing. Hot dog, it's church time. So who's to say whether speaking in tongues is really just a way to be a part of the community or a gift from the heavens? The believers think they have the answer. And believers say the gift can come to some.